Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with just a really quick uh, kind of tutorial craft with me um, sharing a technique that I watched on Shinoki, uh, Shinoki Art <clears throat> and um, what she did is she took cheesecloth and she put gesso on the top to kind of create a layered effect for your journal ephemera. Um, I would use them probably for clusters and such, but I thought I would take it up a notch and do my Mixed Media 101 episode three by using this technique where we can take some textile items and use a variety of mediums to kind of create um, some crackle, um, some gesso. I've got my gold gesso from the crafters workshop i've got my deco art crackle paint which you guys are familiar with if you've been watching me and i've got my distress grit paste from um, ranger this is translucent and then i've got some white gesso as well as my finnebear uh extra uh, art i can't remember what that stands for my funky writing paper texture paste so we will try a few different things this is going to be short and sweet um, when these are dry, I will probably come back and add something. I might do some wax seals. I just got some new wax seals. Let me show you what I found. I really wanted some oval ones, so I did purchase some. So we've got this beautiful rose. thought it would be fun to do some wax seals. We've got some uh, Christmas ones. This is a reindeer. We've got uh, Santa, which I'm not a big Santa fan, so uh, you probably won't be seeing that. Um, we've got a hydrangea, and uh, let's see what else. We've got um, another Christmas one, which is great. Christmas tree, which is really pretty. We've got um, bells, which I would definitely use. And then we've got some more uh, kind of generic um, foliage kinds of things. So these would probably be really pretty for this project. We've got um, like a sunflower or whatever you'd call that, or dahlia, I'm not sure. And we've got some a sprig of something, and then we've got another sprig of something, and a snowflake, and another um, kind of leafy thing, which I thought would be really pretty in the autumn garden journal, which I am working again, excuse me for the loud noise, glass on glass, um, which I'm working furiously on. Um, this is the day after Thanksgiving. I've got a long weekend, so I hope to be able to get caught up from being ill. I usually have my videos scheduled out two weeks in advance, and I am very, very behind with many days in between my videos right now, which is not my norm. So that being said, um, I have already prepped my signatures but I need to get those through the sewing machine do all of my uh, stitching around the pages and whatnot before I come back to you and on camera we'll be doing the um, the hidden spine together and then we'll be st we'll stitch the signatures into the hidden spine glue the hidden spine into the journal and then we'll see where we go from there so um, I'm not going to go into detail about the giveaway. The Autumn Garden Journal is a giveaway, the grand prize giveaway for our 2,000 subscriber giveaway, but because this is a Mixed Media 101 video, I'm not going to go into too much detail there, um, but I will, I will still put it in the description box in case you guys want to check that out. So I forgot to grab some palette knives, so let me do that really quick and then we'll get going. <clears throat> It is early in the morning and I am so looking forward to being able to just kind of craft at my leisure. I am still in my pajamas. I got these like they look like elf pajamas and they are so comfy. They kind of got that kind of a cottony microfiber feel and I love them. So I haven't even gotten dressed. <laughs> Uh, so here we go. So I've got a mat over here I want to grab to put under my under my work area here because I just really don't want to deal with the mess on my glass mat today. So there we go. And I'm just going to move my mediums back on here 
and we will see how this goes. So um, the first one I thought I'd try, I just did some coffee dyeing this weekend. I literally had two pages of the um, lighter weight coffee dyed paper that I've made previously. And so I went um, and did a little bit of coffee dyeing uh, yesterday morning. So this is some coffee dyed um, gauze or uh, cheesecloth, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can separate it a little bit grab my scissors here because I don't want that big of a piece and it doesn't need to be this thick either so I think I'm going to kind of um, see if I can separate this a little bit like so I've got a really crispy edge there that does not want to be disturbed so I'm just going to slice that and then just pull that whoops it's not pulling very well let me just cut it <clears throat> there we go so this is a thinner piece which is more to my liking we can probably actually get uh, well you know what we can always cut it afterwards so I think I'll leave that size so let me just get some of this prepped and then we can get going here um, just debating on how thick I want these actually to be <clears throat> more is better so because that way we can do a, a sampling of different um, mediums on each of these pieces I think we'll just go with that for that um, that coffee dyed stuff and then we've got a piece of I've got some tool you can't really tell um, but this is coffee dyed maybe you can a little bit but I thought we'd also try this this is a little unruly so I'm not sure how well that's going to work but I thought we could go ahead and try it our, uh, together here. So I'm going to get three pieces of that as well. It's a little bit hard to hold on to. So we've got three pieces of that. And let me just stack that. And that I should have been more prepared, you guys. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> and then I've got a piece of lace. I'm not sure if I'm really going to like the lace, but I thought, you know what, I... Um, was digging around in my coffee dry coffee dyed um, drawer of textiles and I thought well let's go ahead and get that out too and if in case you're not familiar with mixed media 101 um, it was requested by my viewers so I am working my way through that so this would be episode three and so I hope that you guys will go back and check it out pretty pretty cool I'm trying to be a little bit more consistent with uh, videos on that front so I want it to be about that thin I'm going to cut them a little bit smaller like so so we've got uh, let's get two of those let's get one more of that <clears throat> it's gonna it's gonna not be very uh, very uh, cooperative I don't think <laughs> so there we go and then uh, we've got another one that is more of a an off-white this is more of a beigey color and I know that this mat is skewing my colors a little bit so I apologize for that in fact we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of that because I don't like what that's doing to the uh, view here so let me just move this the glass mat cleans up really really well um, so I'm not concerned about that at all just get a little bit of um, shadow and stuff here, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this as well. <clears throat> See what we can get going on here. Oh, that's really thin, really thin. Probably will layer that one up because that's pretty, pretty cute. This must be a gauze as opposed to cheesecloth. That's okay. Um, how about we just do two of those? This is what I have out. Okay, so let's get going. So let's go ahead and start with our coffee dyed uh, gauze here. Uh, actually, um, since I want to do a sampling of different ones, I'm going to kind of select what I want to try here. So we could do that and that. Now yeah, let's just get going. We can go back and forth between the mediums if we need to. I'm overthinking this. 
just kind of par for the course. So let's go ahead on this one. I think I want to try some of the crackle paint because it's going to take longer to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and get this opened up and um, use some of it. So I want a smaller palette knife because I don't, we've got a really small area to cover. So let me just reach and grab uh, one of the smaller ones like uh, this one. Oops. My lid just fell on the floor. There we go. This one. So we are going to go ahead and, you know what I could do is use some parchment because then that's not going to really affect your um, your view here of what we're doing. So let me just take this piece of parchment paper and cut it down and I can put it under so that I can just lift it off and move it. I think that will be more conducive to a good process here. Yeah, there we go. So let's get some, um, I'm going to bunch it up a little bit if I can. Make, I'm going to get pretty messy here, I have a feeling. I'm just going to apply some crackle paint. Oh, boy, that's really unwieldy. <laughs> but that's okay. We're just going to kind of get it on there. I don't want it to be super thick necessarily. Um, but And then this can also be colorized uh, with some fluid acrylic or something like that. In my case, that's my preferred colorizing technique. So there we've got one with um, the crackle paint. So I'm going to move that over. And I definitely don't need that to be two layers. So let me um, cut this again. Oh my goodness. I am all thumbs here. <clears throat> There we go. We'll be a little bit more frugal. So let's do that with the um, this. Uh, you can't even hardly see it, can you? This is that uh, tool. So we're going to go ahead and do the same. We're going to use a little bit of our our crackle paint. I have no idea how these are going to turn out. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, that's crazy. Look at that. It all went through interesting probably just because I lifted it so I'm going to put a little bit more on and then move it without picking it up I love experiments it's fun so let's get another one where we use some of the crackle medium crackle paint rather so we've got this one <coughs> and this is actually still too big really Let's just cut that, and we're going to put that in there, and we're going to get some crackle paint. Just something interesting, something different. So there we go. So that is three with the crackle paint. I think that is sufficient there. So let me just wipe this knife off. I'm going to continue to use it because it's nice and small. It's working in a small area here. Let me just cap that up. Um, the All the supplies will be linked in the um, over on my blog. A link to the blog is always in the description box. So you can head over and check it out. Um, the reason why I do that is because I also post, I post my supply list over there. I also post um, a lot of close-up photos. So, um, so this is from DecoArt Media, and I get it on DecoArt.com. I used to be able to get it on Amazon. They no longer carry it. So, um, I ordered uh, three bottles, three jars of this, and it's about, if I remember, it's about five dollars each one. But it goes a long way, and my shipping, I got it in like two days. So, uh, for international folks, obviously that's going to be a different, but. In my case, it was fine. I just I spied something that I might want to add here. I just purchased this glass glitter that's gold. So I think we'll add that to something here um, as we move along. So I'm going to get a, grab another piece of parchment here and do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and cut it down. And I'm just doing the shortcut way here so that I don't have to cut every edge. Can I get it all? No. <laughs> I think I need more coffee this morning, you guys. We had a really nice <clears throat> Thanksgiving yesterday. We did have a lot of um, 
people recovering from being sick. Uh, we thought that Thanksgiving wasn't going to work because my granddaughter got started running a fever, um, but it only lasted about 24 hours, and she was feeling much better, so we went ahead and, and just took the chance and um, still gathered. So I'm going to try the um, gold gesso. I have actually barely used this. In fact, have I used it at all? I think I've opened it. But uh, but I haven't really used used it. But look at the glimmery beauty of that. So it's the same composition as regular gesso. It's just gold and shimmery, which is beautiful. So let's go ahead and get our um, coffee dyed um, um, cheesecloth here. And I'm going to do that. So this isn't going to do anything other than just create some beautiful um, texture on this cheesecloth because it's not a crackle medium, but it's going to be gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, so beautiful. So that can be cut. Um, it doesn't have to remain whole. So I'm going to set that aside. Look at that shimmeriness. Beautiful. Okay, so let's try that with a piece of this. This is that kind of uh, off-white um, cheesecloth. I feel like I want to try to bunch that up a little bit, so I'm hoping that I can do that effectively. So again, gold gesso. We will do white gesso too, just so you guys can see how each of those plays out. So again, you know, I, I mean, I made a mistake by lifting that one because you definitely wouldn't want to lift this until it's dry. Hopefully it will not um, shred it. I have no idea because I've never done it before. So we will see. So there is our gold gesso on the cheesecloth. It's already curling. Look at that. Let me put a little bit more to hold that down a little bit. If I can. Yeah. Just something different to try. You never know how it's going to work. And um, let's try, let's do one more with the gold gesso. So let's go ahead and use this piece of lace. <clears throat> I just think this would be really pretty in clusters, you know, or under a sentiment or something. So super easy easy to do so let's go ahead and put that just so that just so away and I'm going to get out the um, the paper paste <clears throat> I think I um, I displayed that or demonstrated that rather in the first episode of mixed media 101 where we did a bunch of uh, stenciling with various mediums so having trouble with this lid goodness gracious there we go. Okay, so <clears throat> perfect. And um, oh, we've got the translucent grit paste as well. I definitely want to use that. So let's get a piece of this coffee dyed again, coffee dyed um, gauze. And let's go ahead and do the grit grit paste. Maybe we'll put a little bit of gold in this. Um, that'll be pretty. So hopefully this is not dried out. Nope. It's great. I think the one of the times I tried to use this, I didn't follow the directions. So apply with a palette knife or paintbrush directly. Um, it's so hard to read. Um yeah, this, as I remember, it doesn't say. And so I was premature in trying to work with it. Uh, didn't let it uh, completely dry. So we're going to go ahead and try this. It's a lot thicker. I don't want to cover all of it, you know, because we want to see that, that coffee dyed edge and stuff. And so I'm just trying to kind of manipulate it a little bit here in the center if I can like that and we'll put a little bit on this edge 
this is a little bit harder because it's a thicker a thicker medium there we go okay let's put that aside and we will um, pause I'll pause the camera and come back later when those are dry uh, obviously for you it won't feel like you've missed anything so that was interesting very interesting so oh I wanted to put some gold on that let's do that let's put some gold glass glitter on this I haven't used this yet I just ordered it on um, Amazon I wonder what the best way to get this out is because I don't want to waste it so I'm just gonna pinch it Uh, Heather over at Ruby and Pearl turned me on to this. She's been using it or has used it and I've been watching some of her her videos so I thought it was really pretty especially for the holidays so look at what that looks like. Isn't that cool? I think I'm going to grab one of these other ones that has the texture texture paint and or the crackle paint and do the same. Just get a little bit of gold on here. I'm debating on a Christmas journal. I'm not really big <clears throat> on the Christmas journals in terms of making them myself. Um, last year I just played around with some <clears throat> folios and things like that. Um, I'm debating this year. I might do some smaller projects. Uh, we'll see. I really love doing winter themed journals, so we will see. And you know what? I'm going to put a little bit of that gold on I don't want to put gold on gold, that would be silly. So let's see what else we've got here. So we did the, the uh, grit paste, we did a couple of those. Feeling good about that, so I'm gonna wipe that off. And then cap that up. And um, so we've got our regular gesso and then we've got the Finibear uh, paper texture paste. So let's try that. <clears throat> what I found in my, um, Mixed Media 101, the first episode, is that it um, behaved a lot. We used it We used it to actually stencil, and it, it was a little bit more lighter, um, but it held up the same as regular texture paste, which I was really surprised by. So, because look at how fluffy this is. It looks like snow. You can see that kind of fluffy look. Yeah. So let's go ahead and try that. Oh my, it doesn't want to hold on here at all. Probably, I think I have two layers of the um, gauze here, which is probably why I'm having trouble. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. It is okay. I'm just going to try to, I think we'll put some gold on this though. I wish I'd bought some of the silver too. I might go back and do that. There we go. I'm happy with that. I don't want to have sticky fingers when I reach into that that pot of gold though. The pot of gold. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to have my fingers be dry-ish. I'm gonna reach back in there and just give it a pinch. I'm definitely gonna need some silver. I'm gonna have to order some. There we go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So this is the paper texture paste. So I'm interested to see how this behaves um, as it's supposed to. Oh, we've got a whole extra piece over here. I'm gonna come back in and just tack that down. I don't want that necessarily um, all hanging out by itself. So I'm gonna just fold it over a little bit. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> and put a little bit more here. It's kind of doubled over there, which is fine. <clears throat> and a little bit more of the gold. There we go. This is gonna be epic. Cannot wait to see the results. Okay, there we go. 
So what else do we have? I want to do another one with that. So I'm not really sure I want to put it on this though. Let me grab another piece of the coffee dyed um, gauze here. And I think this is actually, um, no, this is actually cheesecloth. So I bought it in the food area of the store recently. So that's, oh, that's a beautiful piece. Look at that beautiful, grungy, grungy, beauty, beautiful stuff. So here we go. Clearly cannot talk this morning. It's going to just kind of just, I don't care if it moves that texture, that uh, cheesecloth. It does weird things with it. It's quite interesting. I'm gonna. It's, it'll be fun to see what it would look like if I colorized it too. I'm gonna fold this edge over a little bit just for some interest there. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna put any gold on that. Just gonna let it be. And then um, let's see what else we want. Um, I think I'm good with the um, texture, a paper paste here. <clears throat> I was telling the story when I ordered this and received it in the mail. Um, it came in a container similar to this, and the entire side was cracked open. The lid was cracked, and all of the pro half of the product rather was in the bag. So I. Uh, went to give a review and I told them how unsatisfied I was with that <clears throat> and they they gave me my gave me a refund and told me I didn't have to send it back so I um, I love that about Amazon like if you make a mistake and you make it right you 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 sold me you sold me so um, so I'm feeling like I want more because this it's not very much so let's go ahead and go in with a little bit more of something something. Let me just look in my cabinet and see if anything else sparks my my interest here. So we've got, oh, we also have the Distress Crackle Paint in Clear Rock Candy. Let's try that one. If you use this product, you definitely want to mix it. Um, you know, with, uh, I usually just use, grab a paintbrush and kind of mix it with the end of my paintbrush because uh, otherwise the properties that make it work uh, don't uh, combine and it doesn't it just doesn't work well so there we go so why is this curling so much come on there we go I'm doubling this up I'm keeping it kind of thick in this case and I'm going to put some of the rock hard candy stuff on it this is translucent which will be really pretty I guess we'd still need to do the clear gesso too, or I mean the white gesso. Could also use clear gesso. That might be cool, but I'd have to dig it out. I'm not sure if I'm up for that. Do a little bit more of the gold. This will be, I think this is going to be absolutely gorgeous because that gold glitter, glass glitter, is going to settle into the cracks when this starts to crack. It's going to be epic. So there we go. There is our rock hard candy crackle. And um, as opposed to crack, I don't do crack. I don't recommend it. <laughs> uh, we still have this um, tool that we really didn't do much with. Maybe we'll do this. Do a little bit of the rock hard candy. Never know, unless you try. It's always nice to have this kind of fodder for for clusters and such. Uh, at least that's what I think. I'm not going to um, put any gold on this one because I want to be able to look at the results um, straight up with each of these. So put that over there. And <clears throat> let's see what else we have. Oh, the white gesso. Let's do the white gesso. I am going to dig out that clear gesso. Hold on. I don't use it much, so it's usually kind of in the back of the cabinet here. Um, let's see if I can find it. There, clear gesso. Hopefully there's, there's some in here. You could also use just regular modeling paste, just as we've done before. 
but um, in this case, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna get one more piece of parchment and cut it as well. Feeling lazy here. <laughs> Just get this parchment paper in the, um, you know, where you get the uh, your foil and stuff in the grocery store, and uh, it's very inexpensive and it it lasts me because if I don't get wet medium on it, I will use it. Like I put it um, in between pages in my journal. Like if I'm working, I'm putting ephemera in, I'm gluing things in. It's not quite dry. I'll stick a piece of parchment behind it so it doesn't stick to the page, and then I just pull those out and reuse them. So. Okay, so here we go. Another parchment. And um, let's see, clear gesso. What do we want to do with the clear gesso? We've got this piece, a uh, couple of pieces of um, cheesecloth. So we'll try that. And so this is my clear gesso from uh, Finna Bear. I don't know if it's any good though. Um, it's feeling like, oh, it is. It's fine. Look at that just fine not dried out or anything so again clear gesso will give you the effect of gesso in terms of the properties and what gesso does it's a um, it is a prep like it's kind of like if you um, paint your walls and you do a layer of what do they call that um, primer it's a primer so a clear a clear gesso is a clear primer so it's really epic for things if you want to like stabilize a book page or stabilize a flimsier piece of ephemera or something it um, will um, it'll strengthen the page and it will you'll see brush strokes and stuff on your surface because you usually apply it with a brush um, but it does strengthen the page so it's uh, an op an option if you want to uh, make pages stronger. So there's our clear gesso. And then we're going to do um, some, I'm just going to do one of that. We don't need to go overboard on clear gesso. It's same, again, same properties as white gesso. So I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and cap that up. I'm really surprised that that's still good. It's old. Um, and then let's just get our, our regular white gesso out. And then we will be done uh, with this part. So I won't end the video. I will go ahead and, um, or maybe I'll do a part two. I'm not sure. Um, you'll find out when you watch the video. Um, so anyway, so that you can see what they look like when they're dry. Probably I'll come back and show you at the end. <clears throat> I'll probably do the, the wax seals off camera. So let's do some white gesso. And I think I will add some gold in there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, um, let's see, do we want to use another piece of this? I'm loving this cheesecloth. I wish I'd done more uh, in my coffee dyeing um, experiment. Uh, it's uh, winter, so they're drying really, really slow on my living room floor on a giant plastic bag because <laughs> it's so cold out. There we go. I think I want to layer this though because it's pretty thin. So there we go. Let's get that back over here. It's unruly. I'm going to use a larger uh, palette knife here. Um, this is the last I need to order. This is the last of my gesso. <laughs> I need to order some. It's Black Friday. I don't go shopping on Black Friday. Although I'd probably get a rockin' deal on some gesso. But. I don't go out on this day. I don't fight the crowds. I'm I don't I'm not big into the commercial commercial commercialization of of Christmas. I just I really struggle with it, which is why I don't really care to create around traditional Christmas things like Santa. Not that I'm a against Santa, but um, it's just not my thing, and so. I struggle um, with the overbuying, and when we do Christmas, our Christmas is very simple. We focus on the grandchildren, and we um, we don't 
even though we have the means to kind of spoil them, we don't. We just try to make memories, get them, you know, some things that they really like um, that are not expensive, and then we just have a good time together. Oh, I wanted to put some gold on this, but that's the gesso, the white gesso. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. I almost lost my grip on the jar when I grabbed it. It would be bad. Do you know how hard this would be to collect off of your desk? So note to self and to everybody watching, cap it. So there we go, guys. I will be back when these are dry and I'll show you what they look like. See you later. Okay, so I am back with um, the mostly dried results. This did not uh, turn out the way that I expected. Um, that's not a bad thing. It's just that <clears throat> it just proves to me that that your substrate, what you're putting this texture on, has everything to do with the results that you're going to get. So I did several pieces with the crackle paint. I did not get the results that I expected. So let me show you one. So this is one that is the crackle paint. And so you can see we've got some crackle up here but it's very minimal and it's really it's almost like it's competing with the um the cheesecloth so i'm just going to pull this off and just show you what it it's a little bit tacky still but i love the look of it like look at that and this one i probably will put some um a gold uh, golden fluid acrylic romp or glaze on it just to see uh, what that looks like and then here is one with the gold gesso this is not quite dry but I'm gonna oh I don't know if I can pull it up without it's not dry at all I'm gonna pull this off of this one though and just show you I can always wash my hands so I love the gold look at that this is the gold gesso I am in love with that so I'm gonna put it on a different piece here because it is still quite wet uh, underneath. So um, let's see another one. This is was the gold gesso on that piece of lace. I did heat set it, and so what what we what I ended up getting was it just kind of um, it must have some nylon in it because it kind of melted the lace, which. I actually think is quite delightful so that was a happy surprise and then this one the same this was the crack this was crackle I think it turned out okay it's very very grungy I will probably go over this with a raw umber glaze as well um, but I love how it it worked out and it also did melt I didn't even think about what was in the lace that it would melt it but it did so but I like it this one is very interesting this was the crackle paint uh, from distress the uh, clear rock candy so I cannot see any crackling at all like come on focus at all but I love this translucent look it's just so epic I will probably do more of this that was really cool this is the clear rock candy also and I'm just going to pull it off of that and you can see how this one really curled up on the edges um, probably again that medium fighting with the um, the substrate the 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 um, uh, what was this the gauze or the um, cheesecloth that we did but I still love it um, it just looks very um, icy and stuff so that's pretty cool and then we've got this one as well this is still drying this is the um, <clears throat> what was this this is the was this the grit paste I can't remember um, it is still drying but I, I love the, the look of that as well so I see it's mostly dry. I don't have a lot of success. This must be the grit paste. Um, it's very textural. I can feel how rough it is and I love it. So that was a win. I'm trying to remember what this one was. Um, I think this was just gesso. So it is still uh, somewhat wet as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it off of that one and uh, show you in my hand, so. I love it. I think it's epic, epic pieces. So this one is, I believe, the, um, this might be crackle paint. I don't know. It might be gesso. I should have probably marked on here. I would do that in the future, mark on my piece of parchment what the medium was because I'm losing track of what, what we were doing here. But you guys know what we tried, so 
and you don't have to take my word for uh, whether or not it worked you guys can experiment too and this is another one um, I think this is crackle or this one nope this is the uh, paper paste and the reason why I can tell is when I touch it, it almost feels like a cotton ball it's really really interesting but I love the look of that as well that is going to be gorgeous and I can still colorize these um, and I might play around with that a little bit as well this is also the paper paste and again this is like a texture paste I've used it as a texture paste before um, but it's really fluffy and soft and and light looking which is is awesome so let's see what else we have here then we have I believe this is also crackle oh, I think I showed you this one <clears throat> Um, so that's lovely. So I'm put that over there too. And then this one was, uh, what was this one? Again, this one curled and such and got really, really hard. This must be crackle because I'm bending it and I'm getting cracks. So um, I probably will accentuate this one with some raw umber glaze as well. But I love the feel of it too because it's got this these crunchy bits that are that are really pretty. So all in all, I feel like this was a win. It was a fun demonstration. And I guess what I'm hoping to impart to you guys is to play with your materials. I mean, what did this cost me? I mean, other than, you know, I do have, I do have a lot of supplies because I've been doing mixed media for about four years, going on five years. So I have collected a lot. But you can play around with a lot of different things. You can actually get crackle medium in the craft in craft paint kind of um, arena that is very affordable it is generally a two-step crackle I think they have a one-step crackle now too but you could um, experiment with these things with a very little supplies just by kind of removing your fear of success or failure and just playing um, and so look at this gold one this is again I think that the gold gesso was one of my favorites and so, so yeah, that's what we have, guys. So you'll be able to see close-up photos at the end of the video. But I will see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.